Um, now we're going to spend some time talking about the specifications. And uh, we're going to cover um, manual, automatic, uh, the AMTs, our axle and differential specs, final drives, and just a note or two on multi-purpose tractor fluids. And that's, this is where your uh, chart comes in handy. And we wanted to hand these out to you so anybody here wouldn't have to scribble notes about things. You can circle things or draw arrows to things or underline them or, or add notes on here. Like I said, I'm, uh, this should be, this should, this hopefully will be a valuable takeaway to you or help clear something up somewhere. Um, and we'll start, I'm not going to go over every single box on every one of these, by the way. Uh, we don't have the time for that either, but I will point out uh, one or two things on each of these. Um, on this particular listing of manual transmissions, manual transmission specs, you note that I've, you, I've isolated whether it's synchro or non-synchro, um, and it corresponds to our EP or anti-wear additive column in there. Um, Eaton is the Eaton is by far the big player in this in the manual transmission business. For a long time, their PS164 specification was the it was a, it's a mineral oil based specification that was their minimum requirements for gear lube. They were up to uh, 164 Rev 7 and they decided to obsolete it in favor of a synthetic. So they designed the synthet synthetic spec, which is PS386. So it's a it is a synthetic product. It's a very, very good product. But it uh, replaces the obsoleted 164 and permits a 500,000 mile service interval. OK? That's the, that's the valuable point on manual trend on, on that. Um, I'll also make a note on the Cat, Caterpillar T04. Caterpillar T04 specification, been around a long time, and prior to that was the Cat T02 specification. It's used for not just power shift transmissions, it does get used in lots of other places as well. Um, but they have also developed a specification called T04M, which is a synthetic product. And it's a, it's a multi-grade. Um, so it uh, comes really into about a 10W30. And allows power shift transmissions to do better in colder environments. Okay. Automatic transmissions. Okay. Uh, several things on here. Um, the most notable, of course, Allison is the, the dominant player in this market, okay, Allison transmission. And Allison has a specification called TES-295, which is a synthetic transmission oil, kind of like a, a beefed up cousin to the old Dexron 3 for, for use in these transmissions. What Allison has done um, that, that pay attention to is uh, uh, they've got a limited number of approved oils. And this is important. Uh, if you go to the, you go to the, you can go to the, Allison has a website where they maintain them. And there are probably 10 different products that have the official Allison TES 295 approval. Okay. Now, all of the major oil companies involved in lubricants and all of the additive manufacturers know about this spec. And they know how to formulate a product that would pass TES 295 if they submitted it to Allison. But Allison is sitting there saying, no, we got we got 10 approved. That's all the market needs. We're not approving anymore. So what you'll see in the market are oils listed as suitable, suitable for use for TES 295. Right? They've been formulated. They've been tested in fleets uh, running Allison transmissions. They perform just as well, maybe even better than some of the official TES 295 approved products. Um, but you'll see this out here that they're suitable for suitable for use, and this is developed again because Allison has limited the number of approvals that they're going to have. And if you're getting a suitable for use product from a um, reputable supplier, one of the major oil companies, major lube makers, the these companies will stand behind the use of that product in transmissions, in the in the Allison transmissions. They'll do the warranty support for that. 
Okay, that's the automatic transmission information. On these AMTs, you notice the uh, automatic, automated manual transmissions. Um, again, everything's a synthetic. Everything's got an extended service interval and an extended warranty behind it. They've all got these, these uh, uh, s fancy grades. Um, let's see if there's much else to add around that. Nope. In terms of axle specifications, the uh, kind of the granddaddy of axle specifications is this GL5. It's been around, uh, designed around satisfying the needs of hypoid gears. So it's loaded with EP. Um, you can find it mineral and synthetic. Um, once that thermal stability became kind of an issue, um, the military designed a spec around it, this, uh, which has then has gr had grown into 2105E. So I have listed down there, I mentioned that's G GL5 plus. So you're getting, it's kind of again, minimum deposits on the inside of gearboxes. Uh, no no, no uh, deposits that are gonna mess with the seals on that. So many people have adopted this as an additional requirement because it's, again, it's like GL5 plus. And since that time, um, the military has, has uh, given up um, domain, I guess, of this specification to the SAE, who also who calls this spec now J2360. So it's just a relabel of the, uh, of the PRF 2104E. So you may run into that out there. But the big player in the market is Dana. And you can see Dana's requirements for synthetic, um, again, with a uh, 500,000 mile interval, 750,000 mile warranty kind of thing. Okay. Final drives, this is our off-road stuff. Um, some of the final drive specs, the CAT T04, uh, been around a very long time and these heavier grades used in the final drives. Somewhere around the year 2000, 2001, Caterpillar decided to differentiate some products that these, the T04 spec calls for some additives with friction modifiers because it's used in power shift transmissions and some other places where there's, there are some clutch materials. But there are some of these, there are some big final drives that have none of those materials and uh, they would want to do, well, they made a few other additive change recommendations too. But the FD1 spec is like, TO, think of it as T04 minus the slipperiness additive. It's, it's a little more complex than that, but that was the, that's the most notable, notable thing. Um, the other notable thing about it is they managed to extend this FD1 compared to the T04, they managed to extend the drain intervals considerably. Uh, Caterpill Caterpillar's own branded product of this stuff uh, declares itself as a synthetic blend. Um, looking at what they do, they went from T04 product, which had about a, in, in some of these final drives, had about a 2,000 hour drain interval. Uh, this is like 4,000 to 5,000 hour drain interval. Um, so that, I'm, um, my, and, and beyond that, my, my impression is it's not even a synthetic blend, it's probably a full synthetic, but uh, they're just not saying so. All right, that's enough of the final drive specs. Multi-purpose tractor fluids. Um, I could have given an entirely different seminar on agricultural stuff uh, and multi-purpose tractor fluids. The reason I bring it in here is because sometimes off-road equipment calls for the use of these fluids um, in one place or another. So I did want to mention to you that when you, like a data sheet for multi-purpose tractor fluid, we'll have an arm's length list of all these specs from all these different manufacturers and so they're all proprietary specs, but they're all really, really close. And it's pretty easy to meet everybody's spec with one given product. That's just kind of the way the market has worked out. The, the granddaddy behind all these, though, is John Deere. 
the JDM J20C is, is kind of the, the, the big standard. Um, they have another low viscosity version for use in really cold places called the J20D. Um, uh, so that's the, uh, that's the story on multi-purpose tractor fluids. M if you're not familiar with these things, they're kind of the uh, duck-billed platypus of the oil business. They do all kinds of functions in a, a piece of equipment. They serve as a final drive lubricant. They serve as an axle oil. They serve as a, as a gear oil. They serve as a hydraulic fluid. Um, they're used in the power steering units. So they get, they get lots of different use. They're asked to do lots of different stuff. Um, and they do get, uh, do get put to use that way. Um, and uh, I like to keep uh, my presentations current and current events. This is, you notice it's, it's only from August 1, this in the Lou business, this is late breaking news, uh, really late breaking news. Uh, this this came, actually came at me prior to this, when I was putting this slideshow together, I said, and I was doing the hydraulic tractor, I said, oh, you know what I should mention? Because I got a phone call from our, our guy running our Mesa warehouse and said somebody had been over there trying to buy a pallet of 303 fluid, and did I know what 303 fluid was? Which I had heard of it, but 303 fluid is really, really old, okay? It is, it is an ancient specification. Um, so I ended up talking to the guy, and he was saying, well, I got this company, and they'll sell me it for so many dollars a pail. And I, I ended up telling the guy, I said, I couldn't sell you water in a pail for that price. <laughs> and I'm not so sure that wasn't what he was buying, because he was buying from one of these companies. Um, and uh, um, I'm giving this information to you guys, in case you do buy hydraulic tractor fluid, watch out for this, all right? Um, the, th the 303 tractor fluid, it's a very old deer specification. Again, I think maybe from the 40s. And there are tractors still running from the 40s, but that's not the point here. Uh, it was obsoleted in the 1970s. They, they took it out, stopped using it completely, and it was superseded by what has morphed into that J20C uh, spec from deer. Um, but these products are still sold today. And they're, so they're still labeled just as 303 tractor fluid. And if somebody hasn't been paying attention, that his, uh, his, oh, I used 303 tractor fluid back in the 1960s, it's just tractor fluid, right? It could be using it today. The stuff is so bad that the state of Missouri took action to ban sales, um, to ban the sale of this stuff. That's how under additized, I guess is probably the best way to say it, under additized it is. So. I just wanted to pass, pass this along to everybody as a matter of warning. Um, if somebody's in there selling and it just says 303 fluid on it, uh, you could definitely turn that down.